either due to not delivering the sort of performance they expected of themselves, or even just not particularly enjoying the type of match they were involved in on the night. These folks would all argue that not every seemingly monumental moment is what it's cracked up to be. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestlers who hated their big moments. Number 10. Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 18 Simply put, there wasn't a match within WWE that could have possibly followed the lightning in a bottle that was Hulk Hogan vs. The Rock at WrestleMania 18. The Icon vs. Icon epic was a once-in-a-generation showdown that whipped the audience into that much of a frenzy, the rest of the night was only ever going to go in one direction if it didn't main event down. Sure enough, Chris Jericho and Triple H's subsequent clash over the undisputed WWE Championship felt like a bit of a letdown after such a euphoric prior experience. Sensing this was always going to be the case going in, Jericho admitted to lobbying for Rock vs Hogan to go on last, but his opponent felt the world title should close the show. In the end, the air being sucked out of the building in the wake of such an instant classic left the pair with too much to do in the main event. With Y2J later confessing that he felt the build-up, the match positioning, and the encounter itself wasn't great. But as he puts it, I can say I was in the main event of WrestleMania, so there you go. Number 9. Walter Survivor Series 2019 Walter is a simple man. The current United Kingdom champion likes to step in between the ropes, beat the ever-loving piss out of whichever star is stood opposite him, and then leave. What he isn't the biggest fan of, however, is any match which threatens to complicate that formula. So that's why when the ring general finally made his highly anticipated WWE main roster pay-per-view day, debut at Survivor Series 2019, the Austrian Leviathan wasn't best pleased about the complex scenario his big moment would be going down in. Walter was involved in a traditional yet untraditional Survivor Series 5-on-5-on-5 five on five on five elimination tag team match as part of Team NXT. Yet the star has since said that he feels having 15 talents in and around the ring, with three inside the squared circle at any one time, deteriorates the action a bit. And if it wasn't abundantly clear how the NXT UK man felt about this multi-man battle of the brand's nonsense. He also told Metro UK, I wasn't invested in that, I didn't care. It's nice to see Walter shares our grievances. Number 8. Rhea Ripley, WrestleMania 36 Last year's WrestleMania likely left more than a few people disappointed. However, the rapidly changing environment and landscape in light of the global health crisis beginning to unfold meant that WWE had to make the best of a pretty dreadful situation. But even though the company moved heaven and earth to ensure the show of shows still found its way to fans in need of an escape from their uncertain realities, some of the stars involved in the nights themselves still couldn't help but feel frustrated about having their Mania 36 plans altered so so late in the day. Rhea Ripley was one such star who felt particularly disheartened about her family not being able to witness her Mania debut against Charlotte Flair, revealing a year later that it really sucked and that she felt really sad and depressed at the time. Ripley would go on to state that knowing her family were watching back home helped spur her on during the eerie event itself. However, there's nothing quite like seeing an even half full stadium cheering your name, something evidenced in the current Raw Women's champion's tears in the opening stages of this year's two-night Mania event. Number 7. The Miz, WrestleMania 27 Picture it. After being told for years that you don't belong in the wrestling industry, eventually winning the most prestigious prize in WWE, and then finally going on to main event at WrestleMania opposite Big Match John Cena himself, you get knocked out mid-match and you can't remember any of it. This soul-crushing finale was one experience by none other than The Miz at WrestleMania 27, as the then WWE champion was on the receiving end of a sickening concussion, on the back of his head slamming off the concrete post Cena tackle over the barricade. Despite finishing the rest of the contest and shockingly retaining the gold on the grandest stage though, the star has since revealed in his WWE 24 documentary that he can't watch the entire ordeal back, as it's scary to see himself in a state where he was out of it. Marking the only mania the A-lister has closed to this day, it's clear that what should have been his most memorable moment in a WWE ring is still a bittersweet pill to swallow for the former WWE Champion. 
Number 6. John Cena WrestleMania 28 One year on from the Miz's mania moment being tasted with a nasty concussion, his show of shows sparring partner John Cena was experiencing his own less than enjoyable scenario in what was definitely a big match situation. After carrying the company on his back for a decade, Super Cena would collide with a fellow icon and the biggest movie star on the planet in The Rock. Their collision then billed as a once-in-a-lifetime showcase <laughs> We were idiots. Was undoubtedly one of the biggest nights of the former WWE champion's in ring career. However, according to referee Mike Kyoda, that still didn't mean Cena was a happy chappy once the dust had settled inside of Sun Life Stadium. The story goes that Cena wasn't best pleased about Vince McMahon's decision to have Rocky go over his full time star first, even with the knowledge that he'd be returning the favor the following year. Cena clearly wanted the first win in the series, but the boss had other ideas, leading Kyoda to confess, I'm sure John was pissed at Vince. The two titans would bury the hatchet eventually, but it's evident that Cena was less than pleased about this once-in-a-lifetime conclusion on the night. Again, we were idiots. Number 5. Chris Jericho WrestleMania 33 Making his second appearance on this list It is plain to see that Chris Jericho is not completely satisfied with what could have very much been two of the biggest moments in his wrestling career. Fifteen years on from being disappointed in the way his Mania 18 show closer unfolded, Jericho had the chance to finally deliver a fitting conclusion to a show of shows main event worthy program, this time opposite Kevin Owens. The two had easily produced the most compelling storyline in the company coming into Mania 33. However, the late decision to put KO's Universal Championship on Goldberg to add some extra sparkle to his feud with Brock Lesnar ultimately had a catastrophic effect on the former Best Pals evening. Instead of having the grudge match go on towards the end of the show, the duo's big moment was shuffled into the dreaded second bout on the card spot. This ultimately felt like a massive insult to Y2J, who explained later down the road that he wasn't a second match guy. So what could have been a crowning achievement for Le Champion soon became the catalyst for a game-changing departure from Vince McMahon's empire. You've only got yourself to blame, Vinnie Mac. Number 4. The Undertaker WrestleMania 33 For a very different reason, WrestleMania 33 was set to be a massive night for The Undertaker as well. Taking up the illustrious main event spot in a match against the divisive Roman Reigns, Taker fully believed that this night would play home to his final ever performance in the squared circle. The WWE icon even stated as much in the Last Ride docuseries, as he admitted the visual of him placing his gloves and hat in the middle of the ring was 100% real and me saying goodbye. However, upon watching the contest back, Taker couldn't hide the fact that he was disgusted with his performance. He also proclaimed that he shouldn't have been in the ring at that moment, but that need to avenge this disappointing showing would kickstart a run that saw the dead man attempt to go out on a high against the likes of John Cena, Goldberg, D-Generation X, and Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon to varying levels of success. Thankfully, a boneyard and a phenomenal sparring partner gave him the closure he needed at WrestleMania 36. Number 3. Mick Foley SummerSlam 1996 we now jump to another big Undertaker match that had one of the competitors feeling disheartened on the other end of it. Yet on this occasion, it was not the Phenom who wished things could have been done differently. Two years before the Legends crossed swords at King of the Ring 1998 in an infamous Hell in a Cell war, Mankind met the dead man at SummerSlam in a boiler room brawl. Despite claiming that it was apparently seen as a compliment to not do commentary over a 17-minute match, Mick Foley felt this this early cinematic encounter seriously suffered due to the lack of personalities talking fans through the action. Foley also wasn't a fan of the fact that the unstable encounter resulted in both him and his rival being injured, with Taker picking up a nasty staph infection and Mrs. Foley's baby boy badly hurting his back. With all that being said, Foley still concedes that the final moments of the clash were really wild, as the enemies battled back into the arena and in front of the live crowd, only for Paul Bearer to turn on his ally and align himself with mankind in a chilling twist. Number 2. Stone Cold Steve Austin WrestleMania 14 
All the stars appeared to have aligned. Stone Cold Steve Austin was set to dethrone Shawn Michaels in front of a capacity 19,000 Boston crowd, with Iron Mike Tyson on hand to make the three count and raise the rattlesnake's hand to signal the dawning of a new era. But as is often the case with many a dreams that stars wait a lifetime to fulfill, the reality of the night itself didn't quite match Austin's expectations. He even revealed his disappointment to Vince McMahon himself after his crowning moment. In Austin's words, I said, God damn it, that was not very good. He goes, don't worry about it. Tomorrow on Monday night, we will be off and running. The boss wasn't wrong. The job, regardless of whether he thought it was epic or not, had been done. And Stone Cold would quickly go on to become the biggest star in the industry. Number 1. Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania 30 being the WWE World Champion is all well and good. Who wouldn't want to have their hand raised in the main event of WrestleMania? However, the reality of being the top dog in the company hits pretty hard once the stadium has emptied and the music has died down. That's something Daniel Bryan learned the hard way after arguably his finest moments inside of a wrestling ring. Along with the usual array of media commitments the new champ is expected to fulfill the morning after Mania, the leader of the Yes movement was also suffering through a number of injuries at the time of Mania 30, with his neck, shoulder, and arm all in a bad way on the night. All this responsibility and pain during that spell is precisely why D. Bry feels that his match against Kofi Kingston at Mania 35 is his undisputed favorite. Instead of being the person in the spotlight after that WWE Championship Classic, Kingston was the one taking on the media commitments and responsibilities that come with being the champ. Whereas Brian could just thank him for a great night's work and head on home with the family. What a life, eh? And that's our list. Know any other wrestlers who hated their big moments? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and go and click on that subscribe button. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon soon.